A few months ago, something terrible happened. Something I would only wish on my worst enemies. I got sick of my playlist. I know, I know, tragic. And usually I would go find a new rap album to listen to, but this time something was different. I wanted to try something new. So I started to listen to music that was outside my realm. And before I continue, no hate to rap, okay? This isn't an anti-rap video. We all know that one person that discovers a new genre and makes it their whole personality. All of a sudden, they want to act like they're a higher being for extending their music taste beyond mainstream songs. Trying so hard to be different. You're a bot. So I don't want to see no whining from nobody in the comments, okay? I don't want to see no, oh, y'all disrespecting the rap game. But he would have said to my face. Uh, uh, uh. Now sit down and let me talk, okay? Okay. So this all happened back in December. At that point, my main music was mostly rap and I had a few Metallica songs and I was like, okay, I want to expand this, whatever this is. So I started thinking of other bands that I've heard of, but never listened to. And the first one to come to mind was Deftones. And when I first heard the name Deftones, I thought it was going to be some weird torture music. Oh, so you don't want to speak, huh, tough guy? Hey, bring me the Deftones. This pipsqueak wants to play games. Anyways, whenever I start listening to a new artist or a band, I try to find out which album is their best one and start there. And everywhere I looked, the top ranked Deftones album was White Pony. I went in a little skeptical like okay i'm gonna give this a shot but i already know it's gonna be some weird nonsense i couldn't believe what i was hearing i don't know how to explain it if i asked you what the color dark blue sounded like you would say white pony i usually don't like slower songs i like that high energy make you want to stab somebody music but all of my favorite songs on this album are the slower ones no skips whole album is just a chill vibe and then i listened to around the first <laughs> No, not again. This album right here is straight heat. I put this on while driving and I just become Brian O'Connor. I said forget, forget about, about it, cuz. All of a sudden my car got a nitro button. I don't even know how that got there. Whole album just goes crazy. Just hit after hit after hit. Listening to all these bangers inspired me to get my old guitar repaired so I could try taking it seriously. And I went in thinking it was gonna be super easy because this ain't my first instrument. Trumpet, I murder that. Trombone, I murder that. It's just a guitar, how hard can it be? This is hard. I'm used to just having to know a few patterns for my fingers. Trumpet only has three vowels. Trombone has seven positions. Pause. But guitar is like infinite. Every time I play, I feel like I'm putting in a password for an Android. And second, nobody told me guitars are freaking torture devices. I played for 10 minutes and my fingers were on fire. Cause think about it. You're continuously sliding your fingers on steel wires for long periods at a time. So you gotta slice your fingers up every time you play till you get used to it. So I went on YouTube and tried to learn how to play. And I learned a few songs, but they're like really easy. And all the songs I wanted to learn how to play were impossible to learn on YouTube. Some of the YouTube teachers do this thing where they flex on you as soon as you open the video. Just open it. So I was kind of in this weird spot of knowing how to play a few easy songs, but at the same time not understanding the guitar at all. Okay, so you know how your phone is always listening to you, and whenever you have a problem, it just knows what you need? Like if you say, dang, I need a new keyboard, and open Amazon an hour later, it recommends you a keyboard. So I guess my phone was reading my mind, because I was on Twitch seeing if any streamer I watched was on. Go follow the Twitch, by the way. But Twitch recommended me this dude named Chainbrain, and he was holding a guitar, so I got curious and clicked on it. And he was going crazy! And I noticed he was using this program called Rocksmith to play the songs. It was like Guitar Hero, but with a real guitar. So I did research and found out all you had to do was hook up your real guitar to the game and boom. Well, actually it wasn't that easy. I, I don't want to get into it. I might get flashback. Hey guys, to 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 anyway, it was worth it because Rocksmith was actually kind of useful. Like it had actual guitar lessons and tips and learning new songs was so much easier. The only thing I don't like about it though is that the announcer is just so mean. He just has this weird passive aggressive tone. Like after you finish playing a song and make a few mistakes. Decent performance. Are you serious? Rocksmith also gave me more songs to listen to. One day I was just scrolling through the library seeing what I wanted to play and I saw this weird looking album cover. Ooh, who is that? It was this blue square with four dudes just awkwardly standing there staring into my soul. Then I realized I seen the same picture in a bunch of memes so I just assumed it was gonna be some trash and that's until the preview of the song played. <laughs> Next thing you know, I was unironically listening to Weezer. Now, don't unsubscribe. I can explain myself. Okay, so if you don't know what Weezer is, imagine a rock band with a bunch of nerds. I mean, straight geeks. I put on the blue album for the first time and I got a sudden urge to collect Pokemon cards. That's, I never had that feeling before. The whole album was just really innocent and fun. Something that would play in a Chuck E. Cheese back in 2008. But for some reason, I liked it. It was just a feel good vibe. So I assume all the other Weezer albums had feel good songs. 
and then I listened to Pinkerton. Bro, I got Swanton bombed by the completely different vibe this album had. This was like driving through the suburbs and then I took a wrong turn and ended up in the hood. All the Chick-fil-A's turned into Popeyes, real quick. The whole album just had a darker tone. The shift in the vibe had me stunned at first, but I was like, you know what, bro? This is kind of hard, and I still think it's their best album. And apparently when it first got released, everybody hated it. And then out of nowhere, people started to realize how good it really was. And you know what that reminds me of? This is the whole lot of red of 1996. Anyways, after listening to these new albums I collected, I was fiending for more. So one day I was just playing GTA 5, just cruising, and I got curious to see what kind of rock music they had in the game. So I looked through the radio station and it came across Channel X. And if you play GTA, you know there's some rock songs on there. And in the past, every time I jumped in a car and Channel X was playing, I would just blow up the car because I thought it was trash. I never gave it a chance, but this time I was open-minded. And something about this music was different. <laughs> All of these songs were like faster and rougher than the other songs I just talked about. Later I found out the reason they sounded like that was because they were all punk rock. And I was like, hmm, I like this. And one band in specific that I was interested in was The Descendants. And no, I'm not talking about the Disney, ch I'm not talking about the Disney Channel Descendants, bro. That that's for losers. So I started listening to a bunch of their songs and the first observation I made was, this is just, the punk version of Weezer. A lot of their lyrics had similar vibes to Weezer stuff. It's like someone got the blue album and sprinkled Perk 30s on it. I got that same urge to collect Pokemon cards again, but this time cutting lines with them. And I'ma say it right now. Out of all the bands I started listening to, this is the best one. All of the songs are just so fire. And some of them are like 40 years old. When somebody says 40 year old music, my first thought is some nasty old people sounds. This album came out in 1982 and it slaps. It's just energetic and fast and uh, makes my blood sizzle. And the most recent band I've been listening to is Nirvana. The only reason I know who they are is because I would see people wearing the Nirvana shirt with the little smiley face and look at the person and know for a fact that they've never listened to Nirvana. How do you guys feel about people doing that though? Wearing a shirt from a band that they've never heard of? Because I personally think it's not a big deal. It's just a shirt. But man, some people treat it like it's a crime. Oh my gosh, they're wearing my favorite band shirt. My interests aren't as unique as I thought they were and now I'm mad. When I buy clothes, I just care about how cool they look. If it got a nice little graphic on it, I'm buying it. I'll admit, I bought this fire outcast hoodie and the only song I know from them is the Gatekeeping clothing is next level meat writing. That's like saying you can't wear a baseball hat unless you watch baseball. Nobody watches baseball. But y'all let me know how y'all feel about the shirt thing. Anyway, so I started listening to Nirvana and I asked Google what their best album was and it said, never mind. So I went to Apple Music and searched never mind. Oh my God. What is that album cover? Some of the songs in here got like an early 2000s Disney movie vibe, and some of them are just depressing. Like I'm sitting here listening to Polly like, oh, this guitar is slapping. Oh, he's talking about kidnapping. And then a lounge act comes on and I get smacked with one of the juiciest bass lines I've ever heard. If you find yourself sick of the current music you're listening to, don't be afraid to just hop genres. You don't gotta stay in a box of the same stuff. No matter how much you like your music, it's gonna get boring and eventually you're gonna run out. And one more thing, I'm fire at guitar. Ooh, that is so fire! 